Uh, you, you can't fake having cows. These days, people don't have land to farm. Uh, they don't have the skills as well, because mostly they are urbanized. So we're saying uh, everyone can be able to get back into farming and creating wealth through farming, restoring the pride of owning cattle and making money out of it with livestock wealth facilitating that investment process. Log on, download the app today and buy a cow. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, there was a short video uh, of, uh, of the work that we do uh, at Livestock World. Uh, but I just want to first just uh, introduce myself. Um, my name is Mutsuko Shezi. My name is Dutu Goshezi, um, but everyone calls me Shezi, uh, which is my surname. Uh, they always say, um, why are you calling yourself by, by your surname? And I always joke, you know, it's almost like uh, when you're saying Zuma, Obama, you know, you're supposed to know which one are you talking about. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm 38 years old. So I, I no longer fall under the, the true definition of youth because uh, I'm now an older youth. Uh, but I always believe that uh, one can be, can be 75 or 80 but still be young. And uh, the one saddest part of growing, of growing up is losing your youth and losing the kid inside of you. And I hope as I grow, as I grow older, I don't lose the, the innovative kid. Uh, inside. Um, I wanted just to, to give a, a brief uh, background of, of really who I am and how I started off uh, before you see all these uh, fancy things and the, the bio that says one has got patents here, patents there, because uh, I know it may seem as if uh, this guy fell from the sky uh, and just was immediately successful. Um, I think there's a reason why even Jesus had to be born on earth as a human being and be, be a baby and uh, and then grow and eventually die and become the Savior. I think God wanted to prove to us that uh, what he was able to do was not entirely superhuman, but it was really by, by God really planting in him the same anointing that he plants on everyone. Uh, to be able to achieve uh, God's plan for our lives. Um, so I was, I was born in a small town. Um, it's not even a town. It, it's a village. Uh, of course, even now we don't have traffic lights. End um, it's a It's a small uh, uh, town. Uh, that's, that's really the, our only claim to fame. No box. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, I was I was born into a, 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 a biggish family of five five uh, five of us five siblings, and I'm the second oldest uh, at our home. Um, my mother was a was a high school teacher. Uh, eventually, she became uh, a school principal uh, at a school that she started from scratch. Uh, in fact starting with just uh, one cardboard classroom and eventually growing it into a proper school that still exists today, even though she's late. Um, um, I, I, I schooled there and in, 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 in the local school, really walking about three kilometers from home to school almost daily. Um, and then uh, when, I, when I reached grade, grade seven, uh, my mom um, um, made sure that she applies that I go to one of the better schools at the time, uh, which was a boarding school uh, in Umlazi. It's called Umlazi Comprehensive Technical High School or Comtech. Uh, it's just next door to Mangosu Technicon in Umlazi. <clears throat> so that's where I arrived in the city. Uh, the first time 
was never there. Uh, and when the case was over, when I'm in a 21, so every time this package is on my counter, so I'm on a case, and I'm on a case. So, when I figured out that I was this rural boy arriving uh, in Okshin, and I still remember the first time I uh, got my wheat peaks, I didn't know how to eat them. So, so what to pose, I just got a cake at the end. <laughs> so there's this friend of mine uh, he always reminds me of that joke oh good see when I have this with the mouth with pigs because he has the mouth with pigs with a little boy and a pana with a little boy and a advertiser boxing they just put a plate and the with pigs you know, they don't put the milk you know so you know to really I had to use my imagination in terms of how does this thing really work you know and that was my solution. It worked for me <laughs> at the time. Um, so um, I, I, I then progressed through, through high school. Uh, I focused on math and science. And there was a stream that I, I, I eventually chose. My, my initial ambition when growing up, when people always ask the class in teacher with guidance, she would always ask, so what do you guys want to be when you grow up? Um, I would always say, I want to be an architect. Um, I had never met an architect in my life. Um, I, I now have friends who are architects at least, but back in the day, really, the closest I would go to an I, I, I came to an architect was just So as the, as the taxi was driving to Deben from Pine Town, there was this architecture firm that was on the side of the road. I can't remember the name, but it was something, something architects. So I just figured, you know, it must be very nice to to sit and think of of creating a building uh, out of nothing and uh, imagining something and saying, uh, imagine something out of nothing and saying, okay, in this empty space, there's going to be a building, there's going to be 10 stories high, it's going to look like this, it's going to have so many uh, windows, it's going to have so many doors, so many floors, um, this is going to look from outside, it's going to look from inside. All that stuff really just, just, just using the imagination to create things that don't exist. You know, I think, in a way, I, I never got to become an architect, as you saw, I eventually became an engineer, because Mang Fiaga Metriki, I realized the Guti, Aweko Amapasari, Okfunda, architect. That's the one uh, hard realization. So eventually, I decided to do engineering because I'm a Basari engineering women. I was very blessed uh, to to be able to uh, to pass my metric extremely well. I, I worked I worked extremely hard. Uh, I would cross nights. Bele labantu ngamgi vale boarding school ngi vale bathroom netes klami. In that issue. And <clears throat> when I finished my matric, I was able to get an A for my maths, an A for my science, uh, a B for my English, C for Africans, and B for everything else. Uh, so, thank you. I, m I must say, though, that um, in our school, we had the worst math teacher in the whole world. Uh, even the science teacher, Two days before the exam, the teachers were still trying to finish the syllabus. Uh, like on the day of the exam, they were still trying to teach people how to do. Um, uh, what's this? Uh, this chemistry, you no know, C, you no know, I forget the carbon things. Yeah, but those are the things that uh, one had learned in June or July uh, on their own, and just learned and imagined what. Even though we didn't have science equipment, so we could we just imagine what the reaction would look like. We never seen sulfur and magnesium, we never saw it. But we just knew, okay, magnesium, if I put water into it, uh, it forms like a flamish type of thing or steam. So that, that was the environment that one, one, one was raised in where it wasn't really uh, all, all hunky-dory or all nice and easy, uh, but really that uh, Hard work and great determination made Wootsie when 
my Puma results at the time my mother was a Puma Pepin, and as a master Puma Pepin in the match. But after Puma my results, I wasn't just a normal kid, as in way. At the time, I was a kid with options. Uh, I was a kid who could become anything. Uh, I, I was a kid who could uh, use a phone there. A phone there under under tough conditions. Uh, one then was able to go to the same class. Nabantu Abemi Funda go St. John's go Market House go St. Stephen's University, you know, and and fight pound for pound for 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 a degree with them, whereas they had ten times the money that I with that our family had, or maybe a thousand times, uh, but with with. That set of marks that one had, one was able to really have a bit more options. Okay, so that's that's the that's, that's the education part. Uh, just to point you a picture, would I didn't fall from the sky. I I am a normal person who 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 grow up through challenges that uh, most of us black people face, and uh, and God being good, one was able to. Uh, to, to be disciplined through through that through that time because there's a reason why I was born in such circumstances because I wouldn't be the same person had I been born in different circumstances so there was no mistake from 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 God's point of view uh, in terms of how uh, how one was born and how one got to become an adult so I will fast forward a few a few a few, a, a, a few uh, 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 paces a little bit, um, so so after after UCT, uh, where I, I, I qualified as an engineer, uh, I realized that I don't really want to be an engineer. I, I realized that I don't want to be. I don't want to be what I don't want to be what I studied. In fact, that realization came I was when I was in my second year, or in the third year. But since that's the one question that is always asked. Uh, or anything, just two uh, one because there were I had siblings who who had to who are one had to support because uh, uh, unfortunately when I was starting my second year, my mom just passed away suddenly and she was the single parent at, at home. So, so there was January, just three weeks before school was supposed to open. Uh, now uh, there's young kids here who are now looking at looking at me uh, with no plan in terms of how to go on in life, uh, since they are sole breadwinner, uh, they're gone. So, um, I won't I won't I won't bore you most of, most of those details. But really, from that from that point of being able or being in a in a corner where suddenly one is almost an orphan uh, at, at 19 and having to support uh, four other siblings uh, who are looking at you daily that forced in me that uh, desire to to say okay our parents left us a few policies and a few and a bit of money here not a lot of money how do we make this money go longer how do we not run out of money so that also spurred in me that entrepreneurial drive of saying, uh, let me try and invest some of it, which I did. But also I started some businesses as well while I was a student. And uh, those were very successful businesses, by the way. Uh, I think in my whole life, I've started about 17 or so businesses. Uh, so it's always important to start small. Uh, so when you see us doing Laughter Wealth appearing on TV, it's not the first business that I've been involved in. Uh, in high school, so, that, so in order to not to ask for pocket money from home, because I knew they didn't have money anyway, I would go to the local wholesaler, buy cookies, all the So I would go and buy them at the macro, a trade center like this pingo and I will sell them uh, after dinner uh, after dinner before the, the, the people went to sleep they'll always go hungry 
So that's how I made my whole pocket money in high school. Uh, and then in university, what I then did was was uh, was to to buy all my video games. That was all I in Ghana. So for fifty cent, one round or two round, we play game and or or second three or whatever those ones, the ones that are in my shops. So in fact, when I was at UCT, there was there was a big business for me. Uh, uh, so I bought I think two or three machines. Now bigger, not not only involve to put them at the residence where we stayed, and the house committee agreed, and the boarding master agreed, Gaufaga machine. Uh, eventually, in the UCT, in the main campus, in, in the cafeteria, I asked to get permission to put the video games there as well. And from those video games, I was able to go to the bank every Friday and deposit 3,000 rand in coins. And I was like 19, 20. A bank was saving gas. At a very young age, one really got to understand uh, there are many ways there are many ways of, of, of making money. You just have to look and find an opportunity, find a gap. If the students are hungry and they need food, provide the food and charge them and they pay you. And if the students are bored, RSC, by uh, stress, they want to distress, Bafunama video game, Oklala, provide the video games and make money out of it. So essentially, those were some of the lessons that I learned. And, uh, so then, Ngakwetage founded UCT and started working at a, a company called uh, Accenture. And um, unfortunately enough, we used to work at the same company with the bishop. Uh, where we, we, we also cut our teeth as young uh, adults trying to learn the corporate world. So, um, really coming then from being a, a 21 year old, uh, really, that was one of the most important parts that I, that I learned as a, as a young person in terms of saying, uh, one was exposed to opportunities that I never thought one could be exposed to. Uh, I remember in, 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 I think in my first or second week of working, uh, I was sitting in the same room with, with bosses, senior managers of De Beers gold mines. And I was listening, not saying much, but I was a member of a team with two senior people and I was, I was with a team that was advising the beers gold mines on how to do their budgets across the world. So it's something that one could never have imagined as and where we would think one could sit across the table uh, in a company that's now advising big companies uh, on how to solve very big problems. Um, so that, that was the work that we did. Um, but as with every uh, other business, uh, uh, after doing it for five years, I also got a little bit tired of it. The entrepreneur in me wanted to come out and uh, I tried while I was still working to do some other things. Uh, in fact, when I was working, I opened a gardening service business. Uh, so we, we ran a really good gardening service, uh, really, really great. It was called Greener Pastures Gardening Services. Um, uh, we, and we, we used to then we used to just cut people's lawns on Saturdays, sometimes during the week. We would hire, uh, we would hire from them, some of the machines, and uh, the supervisors, they cut the lawn, and the machines would call it to cash and take my custom. It didn't work according to plan all the time. Uh, I remember there was one time when I was doing some consulting work at ESCOM, in Megawatt Park, uh, one of the senior managers there was a client of ours. Um, so this one time, Labante Sparte with Bazo Figa Bazo Bazo Carter, he came as a cast. He didn't pitch up. So, Mabanga Figanga, he's getting him advisor on big SCOM things on Friday. On Saturday, he'll have a working pushy pushy. <laughs> Push it on more, and apart and keep on more weeds. I think I did. <laughs> and then, that's I was like, I was like, how old was I at the time? I was like, 24. 
Uh, so again, the thing of, of humility. Uh, you cannot succeed in business if you, if you can't humiliate yourself uh, to learn. Can't humiliate yourself to be humble and and if Friday, So and the and the customers appreciated that so uh, as a business owner I care about their well being so much that I I I am not gonna say so Rabanda whatever other reason. Uh, if, I, if, I, if the customers want to be serviced, I'm there to service them myself as the owner of the business. So that's, just, that's, the, that's the thinking that still uh, uh, runs in, 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 even in livestock well to this day, where I'm a customer, I'm a phone number, I'm going to guess, it's okay, I'm going to buy a phone number, 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 I'm going So without that spirit, uh, if you don't have that, you are better off being employed somewhere or getting or eight or five. Uh, because if you if you wanna be in business and grow in business, you have to uh, give more give more of yourself than than the time that you do between eight and five. Um, so then in so we got in service. That was one of my of my businesses. So I. So uh, there in, in the gardening services, uh, one learns a lot of lessons, you know, uh, uh, and those lessons are important uh, because who you become in business is a build-up of what of all the previous steps that you've been. So, uh, and and also business is generational. Uh, so, and and business you learn it by coping the closest person. So, for example. Uh, uh, you've seen how uh, George Bush, his father was a president, right, of the United States. His father was George, George, George D. Bush, and I know he was George W. But can you see that having grown up in a family where your father is a president of the, of the United States, and you see him every day, you see him angry, you see him sad, you go with him to the park. A young George W. Bush sees himself a better president than his father. So it's the same with business. And that uh, my, my parents were, 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 and grandparents were into business, but not at the level that I'm in now. Uh, they did not create a company that's, that's just got income more than, say, 10 million rand a year. Which, which one has been able to do. But also, I would think that my son, who is eight years old, should be able to do better than me because every day he can see, we can hear when I'm talking to clients, when I'm with him, uh, when we are walking in the park and the customer phones, I have to attend to them. He can hear those conversations. And surely, if he takes over from me when I'm like 65, then he should be able to not start from zero but, but start from the point of, of where I left off and build on from there. So even, even for yourselves, don't feel bad. Uh, maybe you are not going to create a 100 million business today. Uh, maybe you, you will create a, a 10 million rent business. But at least you are leaving a footprint that someone else can walk on and build on. So then that's the one other uh, key takeaway of saying, Start small, think big, and and don't think you would see the plan I'm trying to and the sasa who so say my newspaper in me, so go for this magazine in a go bar. Because if if that happens too early, is a confused by fame. Is a confused by fame. Who calls your good? Are you a, a speaker? Are you a celebrity? Or are you a business person? Because you can't be both. You can't be bored. Even now, me, there are certain speaking engagements. And I refuse to go If I do that, that takes time away from the business. I could be using that time to grow the business. But then, if, if you choose to be a speaker, then be a speaker. Uh, 
and that's your business. Understand that your business is speaking, public speaking. And if you want to be a business person, you need to put in the time. Put in the time away from the line of light. One thing I love about uh, being, being a child of God is it's also a farmer. And Ngoba, uh, the one thing about farming, which is really important, is a good thing. You always start with a seed. And a seed, you have to put it on the ground. And once you put the seed on the ground, you don't really see it for quite a while. But when it's underground, it doesn't mean it's not growing. At some point, it's going to come out from the ground and sprout. And other people choose to eat the seeds. Other people choose to just want the seeds they're going to bring up, go up too quickly. And don't want to put in the time of waiting where things are dark, where there is no sign of progress. Now, everyone loves a farm. No one loves a farm when it's so much about and our uh, masses are sang apart. Because that doesn't look appealing. But that, that, that faith of being able to say there is a seed underground and in three months it's going to come out or in one month it's going to come out. Let me continue with and water it. Let me continue with Fago Manyolo. Let me continue removing the weeds. That's what creates a farmer. And I think, I think that's, that's the one most important thing I've learned and my faith has helped me in business a great deal. Like ten Ungulungulu my creator what I'm not ever. Agazanga by Tata Babege a in hotel a job bag. Oh he didn't build a hotel for them. He put them in a garden. And it, what is a garden? A garden is a farm. There's a reason he put them in the farm and Adam's job was to work the garden. There was his primary purpose. And because in life, if you apply the principles of, of patience, of diligence that the farmers do in everything they do, everything else, if you apply those same things, which is, the same, which is why God put Adam and Eve there, because he was trying to teach us something, we would see. Uh, anything that comes too quickly, fades too quickly. And he was trying to teach us those, those basic tenets of, of how to live our lives. Um, then things will transition now to, uh, to, to then how I, how I decide to do business that I do. Because for the most part, people always struggle to say, what do I do with my life? Uh, what business do I start? There are many opportunities, but now forever. There is it forever. So the million who have been a holiday once every six months, a buying about nine forex, trade forex, was a born now, so I'm a Lamborghini, Jingam, Sars. But that thing of deciding what to do uh, with, with what to do in business is the most important thing. And uh, one of the lessons that I learned. Uh, when I was uh, in, in, in the U.S., in the U.S., uh, I'm glad Mfundis Bishop was talking about getting out of your comfort zone. Uh, sometimes you don't really get uh, the truth being told to you. They, they want to be too nice when about uh, but One of the reasons I learned when I was in the U.S., this one guy was talking about, about how to find your purpose, really what to do. Uh, and and, and I've, I've applied that same principle in, in, in how I start businesses as well, is to say you need to find something that makes you angry. Find something that makes you angry. If, if seeing people, Ebara, Begoma Q, makes you angry, Benga Nago Nesi, it that really makes you angry then you can take that anger, that anger, use it as your jet fuel or your petrol to then find a solution that will make you not to be angry anymore by saying, if people are getting 
bad service is a bar, I'm going and I'm angry about it, and I can do something about it, I'm going to uh, be a doctor, and I'm going to uh, start a, a cheap chain of, uh, of surgeries where people can come in, get, get help quickly, so that, that being able to identify uh, the stuff that really makes you angry, then can enable you to, to then find your solution to your anger, which then becomes your purpose, which you then uh, apply in what you do next as a business. Because if you only do the business mobile, uh, you will not last the law. If business takes probably about three, four years before you start making any money. Even, even in livestock wealth, we still have not broken even. In other words, we still put a little bit of money at, at the end of the month than we're supposed to until we, and that's already three years, we're gonna be three years on the 13th. Uh, so now, if, if you're doing something that you're not passionate about, then it's gonna, it's gonna be very likely go to the social katala. And umu social katala, uzo tena, umu azi ugu tu wenzani. Na mtanjo posta nga loku, upele kufatabali, sasu su posta nga loku, su wenza loku, and that's a signal you would see. There is somewhere where, where you are not really truly aligned to your passion and not truly aligned to your purpose. So then that's the one giveaway there. And, and for me, uh, one of the things that uh, one of the things that uh, I was I was angry about is is the fact to Wuti Ekaya Mangkula Ekaya Mangkula there were just a few not too many about six or seven cows uh, and those cows provided, I would say, 80% of the financial needs of the family. Mangkula, Ubi is the building at Teng. The same at Konala, Ekaya, Irama, the building at Teng. Ukoko was able to end the part from Ubi. Amasi abenga tengu. Gobalona lulubisi lulu maoshe lulu begile ni lapana ulenze lunga lunga lulu tuli sape kone ni msamu. Eventually tenlo amasi. But then, one then being living in the city, wonku mundu living living the the natural place where where they are born, where, they, where there is family, where there is a support system, and going to Johannesburg to try and earn a living. So that's so far as to make a car. For me, there is one thing that uh, I find is not right in that uh, the reason. One of the main reasons why, why um, uh, <clears throat> our social fabric is so is, is the way it is today is because when the mines started in Joburg, people were forced to leave their families, uh, and for most of them, their cows were forcibly taken from them. So, when the cows are forcibly taken from them. Uh, now, eventually, mama was a cow who was a good Manje, babu, sbiya. Aubo, no good tea. Kum kondo mochi would now uhambe uye koli. E maini. Njengo, njengo, njengo sbeg. And then that created much of the, the social fabric that we have even to this day where. Um, when 
people go to Joburg, families are, are broken. There's no father figures at home. Uh, kids are growing on their own. Um, kids are growing on their own, trying to figure out their lives. Mothers are becoming fathers uh, because their families are broken. Kuba Nungoskas was a goal. Kuba Nungoskas was to have a And eventually, uh, as you have seen, uh, with, with how Abandba was a goal, you've seen a film. So, for me, that stuff, I don't like that stuff. Um, I figured I can't solve all those problems. I'm not the government, but what can I do instead to say, how can one take what used to work back in the day, which is people owned cattle. They didn't need money. Uh, they were rich in their own way. Um, how can we then take that which used to work back in the day, how can we make that to work in 2015 when we started? How can we make that work? And how can we make that work within Within the the constraints that we have, Octani, we would umshaba awoko, neko no lokfu ya futaliko, and that there's lots of people who love to own cattle, but they don't have the land, they don't have the 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 skill uh, to farm, and also uh, they are they are they are therefore their lives already established in Joburg. They put their families there, maybe my lawyer, by my boat or whatever and whatever not, or working in the factories in Joburg. So since we can't really move everyone back to a, a Makai, uh, then how can we still make the same economic principles that used to work back in the day? How do we make them work again uh, in in this day and age? So for me that that was my passion. And uh, I think that's been the guiding light in terms of uh, how one makes decisions in terms of uh, how the company grows. So, for example, there have been people who are saying, uh, like for example, people were saying, if if you can actually borrow people money to buy a cow, we can make so much money from the interest uh, that we don't really have to worry about the cow business. But in I the guiding principle in my in my heart is saying, I can't make I can't make more black people poor and feel happy about it. So that's the so you, it's important for you to know that you know, because those become your boundaries in in how you make decisions. Because uh, if you push your cash, you will do that, and you yes, you will make a lot of money. Yes, you will start Zimbabwe, Noma, Kailam, or whatever, but you haven't changed the world. So that's, that's, that's really just the, the big program. So, so then what we then did with, with Livestock World was to say, um, let's create what we call a crowd farming. Think of, think of, think of the crowd farming as, as a way of saying, um, Let's create a crowd farming uh, platform that allows anyone to be a farmer. And I'll, I'll make this example to simplify it, to see. If you live in Joburg and you want to own cattle, uh, the one easy way of doing it is to have an uncle who has a farm somewhere, maybe who already has cattle, uh, uh, and hopefully this is Zala, Zingafi, Zako, Zipile, Zak. This is Zonke, Zako, this is Zala, Jake, Zak. You know, you, you, you have to have that. But not everyone has got that uncle. So basically, the livestock world allows everyone, you and me, anyone in this room, 
to have that uncle who will look after the cows for them professionally and uh, the uncle makes money, you also make some money. That's the, that's the summary of it. But we've also uh, simplified it and said, I don't want to own a cow and then it dies. If the, if the cow dies, it must be the problem of the uncle. He must replace. It's only fair. Because I wasn't there looking at the cow. I don't know what it ate. It's a plastic or something. plastic. Why should that be your problem? Um, and also, um, I don't want to own a cow that's not pregnant. But manzo so manzo ten komo bes le komo le aizal ngayifida nje pe lo mufaki mal nje pe iwallet iwallet ya malu kote kuto ya aizala manga taba ngu taba mnyango zao sizo zao yeah so so then we really just simplified it and say okay uh, let's allow people to own only cows that are pregnant. Because why do you want to own a cow that's not pregnant? Because at least if it's pregnant, you ask Zuguzi, uh, with almost everything. Nine months, my uh, pregnant Namchanje is three months, six months is Ozal in Konya. And in Konya, it's about 30 kg or so in weight. It's Okula, about one kilogram a day. And then uh, after six months, the long Konya should be about. 200 kilograms. And then I can actually take the and make about 6,000 rand income from that, from that cow. That's what the average rates now. Moya, Guma, auctions, and all the other places between five and 6,000 rand or so. That's what you get uh, for, for in Konya. So we, we said, okay, let's, let's allow people to own only pregnant cows. If the cow is not pregnant, it shouldn't become your problem. Then, then the farmer or the uncle must give you a cow that's pregnant. If they still want your money, yeah, so uh, and we've done we've gone further as well to simplify it to make it to make it look like a fixed deposit. In that, Wongo Mundi has fifty point seven zaga jana gate. Yahamba and the Malaya got ten thousand rand. We have here banki. We shall shallow in the pan. Consultant into fund deposit. Malin yam fund deposit twelve months deposit. To answer my forms, we need to tell you man. Then that's the last you hear from the bank, right? Because those babuane, twelve months time, must go shang on the first day in food, where you get the original money or ifagile plus your interest. So we've actually done exactly the same. Na na same comment uguti. Instead of giving the money to the bank teller, langing as uguti uzo tata inze ni no man. In this case. We take that same amount, put it in the cow for 12 months. After 12 months, you get the original amount back plus interest, which is about 11 or 14 percent. And if you like what the uncle has done, you do it again the following year. And if you've got more money, you, you, you put into more cows. But you know that your money is growing at a better rate than at the bank. Because my Jama bank, but I know 6, 7, 8 percent at the current rate. So, so what we've done, uh, which was uh, the first in the world, we were like the first in the world to do this, which is allowing allowing people to to own cows remotely. Uh, so we launched in 2015. Uh, all I did was really just. Uh, after trying to buy a farm and get a farm from a government for a long time, uh, I went by Holmen, uh, eventually I met this other uh, white farmer who was selling his farm. And then I told him about what we wanted to do. And at the time, it was called Livestock Bank. Because uh, we, we thought it's a bank for cows. Uh, so, but when we tried to register local market, we ask the epitoli. They don't want you to call yourself a bank if you don't have a banking license. So, but we, in the future, in the near future, we're actually going to 
to, to become a cooperative bank uh, where all the people own cows, not just people who got cows through us, but any farmer anywhere else can be part of the, the cooperative bank. So that's still coming. So we then became Livestock Wealth, which is really close to bank. Um, so what we did is we rented the farm, we bought cows, made sure they are pregnant. Once they are pregnant, took photos of them, and made sure that each cow has got a, a, a unique ID, ID number. Uh, the ID number is actually tattooed onto the, onto the leg of the car, of, of, the, of, of the cow, so that it can't really be removed. And so if the number is 17243, that will be the number of the cow until it dies. So just to make sure that there is, there is integrity as well in the system. We also went a step further as well, and we, we hired the season Zaluba, Kobodo, Sibibizong, uh, Grand Tontin, SNG Tontin Manj, uh, to become our auditors, just so that we can give people peace of mind as well. We'll see hey, these black guys who are doing this cow thing, you know, are legit. <laughs> yeah, so we had to actually do that, so, so just to build trust as well, because uh, uh, yeah. As with as with as, as with anything actually in, in banking, I trust that a bank will never leave a share corner. The is still here today. It's entirely based on trust. So the same with the cattle, because it's it, it's in effect a bank. It's also based on trust. It's in good It's in good health, well looked after, etc. And so that's going to be uh, our our livestock wealth bank card. So Uma Uma Umu Ona that's actually where we'll actually put your your profits and your your money. You can then move it wherever you want from there. Uh, we're busy with the one one bank to, to finalize that it's, it's supposed to have long been live but it's coming soon. Um, and then um this is this is uh, some of the awards and the um, and nominations that we've, we've won: uh, the African Entrepreneurship Award, the Web Summit, uh, which is a very big international technology conference. In fact, in 2015, we were there in we were, we were selected as one of 2,000 worldwide uh, startups. Uh, we went to at the time it was in Ireland. Uh, <clears throat> um, so we went there, we presented, and one of the big technology magazines, in fact the biggest technology magazine in the world with 26 million readers worldwide, it's called TechCrunch, it's a US uh, magazine, named us one of 21 most interesting startups of Web Summit 2015. In fact, the, some of you use Uber. Uh, Web Uber was in the same conference uh, with us uh, that we went to, but they were four years early. And uh, there were just two guys with an app and a few cars. And, uh, and in 2015, we were also just t two guys uh, with a few cars. <laughs> so the plan is to also not just be based in South Africa, but to expand to anywhere where there is cattle, and not just for cattle only, because if you look like at this stage here, there is flowers. Now, these flowers were grown by someone at a farm somewhere, right? So in the future, we can do exactly what we're doing for livestock, even for flowers, where if there's a farmer who's planting flowers and they are selling their they are selling their farmer their their, their flowers to whichever market, Woolworths, wherever, then in that same farm you could have your own flowers growing there, which will be your personal flowers. And when they sell, you get paid as well. So that's because if you think about it, uh, what we're doing with the cattle can actually be applied 
into any form of agriculture. Could be for chickens, could be for 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 maize, could be for timber or any other thing. And and this was last year in October where we won the the SAB Foundation Social Innovation Award. Um, we were the overall winner there. And our solution was very simple. Um, <clears throat> we were competing with some very intelligent guys. In fact, the guys who got second place, you won't believe what they did. So they have this, they have this truck, like a truck, like an eight-ton truck. The eight-ton truck, I bought. Actually, you can actually drive the truck in Kakwen. And then you can actually, if you go past the railway line, you can turn the truck and put it on top of the railway line. And it drops the wheels of the steam mailer. And the same truck drives on the railway line now. <laughs> but they came second. <laughs> they came second. And our solution was very simple, which was to say, in South Africa, there is a lot of cattle emakaya, which are neglected by their owners because they don't see them as a tool for making money for them. But if people understood, Uguti, that's 15,000 rand, easy. 15,000 rand on the side of the road unattended if you knew its worth. So our solution was to source in Gomo from Abalfuibase Makaya and then get them access to to proper markets by firstly Tatsingomu um Tatsingomu Sikuli is a plus in the LE approved Eli Nawonke e infrastructure in a supermarket even to trusted standard. So I'm happy to announce uh, we, are, we are now the only black supplier will wait a free range beef. So we we actually have created a We've created a, another uh, sort of call it fixed deposit uh, a method called called a, a free range, where we source it's a term in before we figure to maturity, and then we move it to a Woolworths approved farm and it operates according to the standards that they want. Then my figure lapo you can also be an owner of that cow for the period of six months while it grows. But in this case, if uh, you become the owner of the cow for six months while it's fattened up nicely, when the cow is slaughtered, then, then it's a payday for for you, the owner of the cow, who's been owning that cow for six months. So that's the, another innovation that we've actually built in, which is investing in a free-range cow for six months, yeah, cooler, yeah, 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 in, a, in a trusted supermarket, and then when it's slaughtered, then it's, then it's payday, and you get uh, a return on investment of between 10 and 14 percent per annum, depending on how the cows perform. Yeah. Um, I think there's just uh, just two more slides before I open up for questions. So we, we're currently managing about 1,600 cows on our platform. Uh, these are cows that are owned by people in South Africa. Uh, we have a lot of people in America who also own cattle. These are Americans who live in America. Some of them have never been to South Africa. Uh, and Germans and Italians and uh, English and Austrians and French and Australia and Singapore and Indonesia uh, and even Mexico uh, who own cattle in our farms in South Africa, even though they live that side. Then we, 
Thank you. Um, we've also created some really good partnerships with uh, companies like IBM, which uh, which help us with the technology we are building to be able to track the cows remotely. Uh, then we can be able to to know exactly uh, what uh, uh, is something we're doing now. About around creating a database of all the people own cattle uh, if in every corner of South Africa. Be part of the cooperative bank that we're going to be creating in the next uh, in the next few months. We will with this this is the right with the figure the supermarket. And then um, this is just some of the the international coverage we've received, even locally. In fact, as a patient, Perala, or even Nago SAPC, Nago CNN, Nago TechCrunch, Nago TED, Nago Guardian, or BBC. More than Jebu Internet, you just search for livestock wealth. You will see all of these. And uh, you will see it's only good reviews because uh, we've been three years in the business. And and we've really applied those same principles of really caring about the customer, uh, caring about their needs, and uh, knowing what's in. Um, la in our business, um, the cleaning lady who cleans our office, she works two days a week. She owns cows and livestock. Work. She just owns one cow. And to her, it's, it's probably one of the biggest investments she has, well, I'm sure. The other investment products are Nazo. When we call them investments, but they are not, Tambe in mineral police, which only works to optimize fee. Doesn't really do much more to myself fee. So we really, you know, those custodians or people who have entrusted us with, with, their, with their future of saying, I want to have money put aside in cattle in five years' time or ten years' time. Inga noa yika and down big in Jona Langa, Yego Mashonisa, and Tin and Say Coletini, and even Inga Yam Maisi Faila, and then he was a good person who be feeling a mother's credit. So at least uh, people just uh, are able to plan for the future. And not, and not borrow from the future, because that's what we do when we go and borrow money, Kuma loans. We are borrowing from our kids. Uh, we are making them more poor, because uh, instead of putting money aside for them, uh, we are taking loans and borrowing money that's supposed to go to them. Thank you very much. Thank you. I will uh, open up the floor for just maybe three or four questions uh, before I sit down. Kodi Sandra Lapana, can I have my microphone? Oh, Kodi Sandra Lapana, super was at least. Oh, Nangus is some booze and Nangus. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for this innovative, creative presentation. I think if we, all of us can think like that, we will never be poor and then we will invest for our children, never borrow from the future. So my question is very simple. How do I join this? <laughs> How do I invest? How do I own those cows? Very easy, very easy. Thank you. Um, so convince a man just because of that. Oh, now your website, Lapan. What do you internet, Lapan? 
internet is not only for Facebook. It's also for buying cows. So we have a website, livestockwealth.com. Um, 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 uh, let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Livestockwealth.com. I thought so, there's a lot of food now. It's uh, so in the office, uh, in the second square. I was able to figure it out in the corner. Address the corner website. So, when I was in the world, I was in the world of livestock wealth. I was a taxi driver. I was a bank of my grant. I was a teacher. I was a millionaire. I was a millionaire. I appreciate it. I don't know how many people that believe in 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 the cattle. Okay. Now we put this in. Maybe follow up question on that. From how much? Oh, how much should I have? Oh yeah. <laughs> no, I I was supposed to answer the question better. So you are right. Uh, thanks for following up. So we actually have created two options. There's the option which is the one where you own a pregnant cow for 12 months until it's a zali going to die that's about 18,000 rand uh, actually in Como is a quality 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 that are well looked after uh, it becomes our problem not yours um, and we, we, you also once you once you once you bought the cow, you have access to uh, the, our our web app, such as an mobile app as well, where you actually uh, on the web app you can see the picture of your cow. Uh, every time Masi is shooting come once a month, um, sometimes every three months. My Zala, we take photos of it, we send them to you, we notify you of of, of how your, your investment is progressing. Um, and then this the second option is is the one which is the six month option. The one starts from 10,800 rand. Yeah, so we, we, we then, in the, next, in the next few months, we will, we will try and make it easier to be able to group a few people around one cow. We will be with eight other people or so in one cow. Sasa we are just busy with the, just updating our system. We will take as we see handling of information that we have information. So we just wanna, but so if you've got uh, ten thousand rand, you can start today. Uh, if you've got only got five thousand rand, we you can put a deposit. Uh, if you've got a thousand rand, you can just wait maybe maybe two months. I think with a thousand rand, there should be the minimum start. That you can be able to start. Yeah. Okay, I see another question over there. San Mona. San Mona. In this really presentation, in numbers of money that I didn't see even now. I'm interested to be on the family. What One problem funding also government uh, and the banks they don't fund the family. Number two, now mm. it's not easy to get a. E plus number three, my skills. Tina bandaba miyama, we less of my skills how to do a farm. So if you got one and you clear it, it less in the zoo three. The funding, the understanding of the presentation or at the issue of the you you can buy a cow for eighteen thousand and then ganja ganja. But what if you want to start your own business, sure. maybe with 
partners or but in general, the business in Kulu, the family, the Abonga Kulu. Sure, thanks for those questions. <clears throat> so, um, the, 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 the three problems you mentioned is exactly the problem we're trying to solve uh, for, for people. For good thing. You don't have the funding to own the whole farm. You don't have the skills to manage an entire farm. You don't have the, um, uh, the know-how to, to make cows productive. You don't have market access. You don't have land. In fact, those are the key problems you are solving. So every one of the 800 or so investors we have currently uh, who, who have invested about 26 million rands worth of cows in our, in our, in our farms, those, those people we are solving those problems for them. So your easiest option is to start with livestock wealth. We call Kumali, we call we call Kantilis Yanele. When you do find land, then you have money already saved up, and you can then use that money to buy cattle. Uh, I always say, you will see, if you wait for government to start, you will never start. Uh, in fact, if you are waiting for government with anything, you are probably not an entrepreneur. Because uh, if, if if your business only works because government did something for you, something wrong, uh, something wrong there, because if when government goes or the official changes, then your business goes. There were three years of plenty and then 15 years of famine after that. Cool man. So, as an entrepreneur, what I would do, Mangi, now, is if I were to, to be in your shoes, is to say, let's say you want to start farming chickens. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, the best place to start is let's say who it is? How many ranking or upper four? We find a boxing in Cook, so it's in Gile somewhere. Who it is a rank? A band by ten. And then the moment you are selling ten thousand chickens, then you can say, okay, let me grow these chickens myself. So well, by the time you you sold chicken number one hundred. You will know a little bit about chicken farming. And by the time you sold chicken number 10,000, you'll have money in the bank for you to actually lease a farm or a plot somewhere. So for me, that will be the short version of, of, of advice that say, how does one get going? We are always quick to, to want funding to plant, but yet, the market at Johannesburg is open daily. Uh, you won't believe. No forget the open market. In fact, not even the open market. This is what other other farm that I went to the other day. You could buy 4,000 apples. I kid you not. 4,000 apples straight from the farm for 600 rand. All you have to do is bring your bucket. And then go sell those apples. And then you make money from selling apples. If you sell 4,000 apples that you bought, if you sell them for one rand each, you bought them for 600 bucks, and you spend maybe 1,000 rand selling them, you spend 1,006 and you made 4,000 rand, that's 2,400 rand profit. If you do that once a week, every week, in a year, 52,000 times. 52 times 2,400, that's about 120,000 rand profit in a year that you would have made. So, one thing I always say is uh, about us as black people, we're always afraid of selling. And I love what DJs, 
what I say, my ranking, because that's that's true entrepreneurship. So we need to be exactly like that. Where in as about a match or no good thing, get a summer up on a rank. There's no shame. Go back to the summer pull a rank, or the salary of December in hundred thousand rand. We're now now. When you send the call, send you pendulum in shan. Oh, uh, yeah, wrong a little too. Uh, I've been wanting to meet you, Babu uh, Shiz. My question to you is. Uh, I've already got cattle. How do I go about maybe being your supplier? Like maybe supplying us in combo days, we things set up and how maybe do we work things out? We think we have a supplier. Great, that's very easy. Um, we have a website. We have an email. It's invest at livestockworld.com. You can have a website. In fact, you can, from the website, you can actually send a message. And uh, business card afterwards. But to reach us really from the in, from the website, you can just send us an, an, an email, and then uh, we we take it take it from there. We would love to. We, we're really creating, we're trying to create, trying to create a proper market for 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 small farmers. Because uh, to a small farmer with three cows, Tambe Lemakaya, to him. Those three cows are mean a lot, you know. To him, those three cows mean a lot, and uh, they can be the difference between poverty and and and, uh, and survival for most farmers. And we're really excited to really being able to, to be part of, of the growth of, of other farmers. Yeah. I second boss. Gibonga kulu, gibonga kulu, and bisho pogusi ning meme, I learned a lot. Uh, I really enjoyed the same one and in terms of uh, the, the story of Abraham and uh, and how uh, how um, and how he was able to to ignore certain people and, and, and ignore his past and 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 really go to where God directed him and uh, I'm really empowered uh, because I always say this I'm a Sulumane I am Shani Punkulungulwao Jalongo twelve one o'clock Bavali Tolo for two hours you wait while they go for prayer. I'm a Judah. I'm showing you Punkulungulwao. You wait. My best is my holding. My best is my holding. Give up. You see, I'm a Christ. Punkulungulwao. You part time. I get quite busy. It's in late. And 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 I'm 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 glad you could see. We're seeing more and more uh, 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 Christian uh, entrepreneurs who would uh, do business and at the same time not afraid of mixing that business. Uh, with Unkulunkulu Wait, uh, who guides us, who makes things uh, work for us. Gibunga Kulu with this invite. I'm truly honored. Thank you. My work is very simple. Just to yet again say thank you, Ntutubo. Uh, Ntutubo uh, puts some of us to shame. When you, when you mentioned Uguchi, we, we worked together. Uh, I've got nothing to show for that. <laughs> uh, but you took an opportunity to be exposed, where you were exposed to an environment that was different to where you come from, where we come from, and to look at the opportunity to sit with great people, influential people, clever people, and you sat there and you said, I'm also as clever as they are. And those who created the Anglo-Americans, the De Beers, and the various other companies where you've worked, you said, I'm as intelligent and clever as you are, and I can create something that will establish a legacy for myself. And we are proud of you as, as peers, uh, former colleagues, but also as young South Africans. We are proud at, of what you have done and what you have become. 
uh, essentially the story that you are telling us is that you have taken uh, our grandfather's cows that ate, I mean, to think what they eat pampas, I've decided that I'm not ever going to eat uh, ingomo from, yeah, let's just say, I'm only going to, I'm only going to Woolworths mm -hmm. to eat free range yako. Because what I've heard with Ingomo, the same Makai as Zagagnen, is Italy Pampas. And what you are telling us, Ogut, you've taken these cattle and you've taken them to private school and put them in boarding school and you, you shower them with all of these fancy things and they, they get three course meals and wonderful drinks. And I'm sure Ogut, when they go for slaughtering, there's some classical music that plays in the background and you know mm -hmm. and that's wonderful i want to eat that cow um, what i did not hear you say is uh, i didn't hear you say anything about that i wanted to know but it's a story for a private discussion but thank you for inspiring us and I think the message that you are giving to young people today is anything is possible if you are angry enough. And I believe from what we shared earlier on, is all on a little bit today, and from everything that we are hearing in the media, we've got enough reasons to be angry. We've got enough reasons to be angry. A lot of us are carrying a lot of anger for a number of reasons. And the message is, well, take that anger and convert it into a solution. And that solution helps you, and you are less angry. But there's somebody else out there who is as angry as you are about that very thing. And what he's telling us today is, there is a market out there that wants to take your anger and the solution that you um, create out of it and convert it into your wealth simple as that there is a market out there that is willing to trade with you on whatever idea that you have and a simple idea like creating a platform that solves the problem is something that could change your life and your generations for a lifetime and on top of this i wanna thank you for something different to say I never had an opportunity to work with you closely whilst we were at Sencha, but one of the things I've admired at a distance, and I see it even today, is your humility. Um, you probably will not find many successful business people as humble as Ndutugo is. Um, when he talks about customer care and customer service, I haven't bought a, a cow yet and I'm going to, um, but one of the businesses that he started, I don't know if you spoke about it before we came in, um, is Scratch Mobile. And Scratch Mobile is if you have a bump, a dent, or a scratch on your car, um, for people who are traveling a lot who don't have time to take their cars to um, panel beaters, there is a panel beater at the airport. I think you're at Oartambo, is the one in King Shaka as well? Sorry? Only OR. And you drop your car off and you travel and do whatever you do, uh, you come back, your car is ready, you pick it up and you drive home, or if it's not ready, they can deliver your car. And I actually tried him out uh, a couple of years ago, and I dropped my car off, and they fixed the scratch, and they delivered the car which, with, with sterling service. And they, they got the car home, and I looked at it, and I thought, what an amazing work. But the entire experience, um, I'm not, I'm not promoting the business, but I'm promoting the spirit behind the business, the humility of the person. The entire experience gave me comfort in that I placed my asset in the hands of somebody who truly cares and respects me as a customer. And my wish for you is that as you progress and as the Lord takes you to greater heights, as he's already doing, may you maintain that beautiful spirit, African spirit, and we wish you all the success. And I hope you are all inspired. I simply turn the foot.